with our command prompt. So um, we do know what the other configuration here that basically its clock rate is already 64,000. So it is basically taking precedence over it anyways. So it's 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 making the the default speed between the two. And then we'll go ahead and we'll save our configuration with no shut. And then we'll set up our next port right here, our Ethernet port. And I'll just go ahead and we'll do the copy run start. You could also use the write command, it does exactly the same thing. Once you use copy run start at least one time. And then our next uh, configuration will be your interface FA0 slash 0 with the IP address of 10.0.4.1. And then we're going to do a subnet mask of 255.255.254.0. And actually earlier we set up our serial interface incorrectly. I was looking at the wrong one. I was actually looking at one up here instead of one down here. So we can go ahead and go into that one right now. And you might have to do this in networking sometimes, just correct an error. So it's going to be IP address 10.0.6.2 with 255.255.255.252. And there we go. We'll do no shut on that. And then we'll go right back into our interface FA0 slash 0. And then here we'll put our IP address of 10.0.4.1 with 255.255.254.0. And there we go. So now they don't conflict because this has the correct subnet mask for that one. And that one has the correct subnet mask for this one right here. Then what you want to do next is you want to do no shut. And that saves it. And then we can just do the write command since we've done a, the copy run start already. And then we're going to go ahead and set up our DHCP, which is IP DHCP pool 10.0.4.1. Which right now we are going, we're basically doing this one right here. Now here I didn't do the conf t, so we'll just do conf t. Now we can do it. Now it's going to be our IP DHCP pool 10.0.4.0. Now we can put in our network. And then we can put our default router into there. So we 10.4.0.4.1. And then our DNS server, which is 10.0.4.3. And then we can exit. And since no shut won't work for DHCP, um, we don't have to do that. But we're going to write it at the end. And then we're also going to put our exclusion here, which we have our exclusion right there. So IP DHCP excluded address is 10.0.4.1 through 10.0.4.255. And there we go. And then we get end, and then when we end, we can do write. 
and seeing everything saved to our, our writer or after that. Let's go ahead and close this out. And our next step is we will have to do a, a routing table and and we'll, we'll check our network and make sure everything's working right. And you're probably wondering why this is red right here. But just like earlier, our serial port wasn't on and it wouldn't really let us do the, the clock rate. It's already set with the other router in the bottom down here. But uh, you also notice our fast ethernet is not on. So once we turn it on, it's green. Nothing works if it's turned off. So that's turned on and ready to go. We got our DHCP range set. And now our next step would be our routing tables for these guys and also setting up our switches. So we're going to just do the default route on these. And we'll just do a default static route. And we can go ahead and actually do it in our command line interface. And if you actually logged out of your, your router, usually it'll go right back to where it was. But if we pretend like we're in real life, we logged out of our terminal. Uh, and basically now, if I logged back in, I would have to type in our en, and then we'll do conf t. And from here, we can do our IP route. And our IP route, our default route on router 1, which is this one right here, is going to be, and the default route is all zeros for IP address and a, def, and a subnet mask, because that covers everything. And then we'll do 10.0.6.2, which if you look at here, it's that one right here. It goes to that router. So everything that goes through this one will end up going to this one. Whatever packets get sent through, that's a default route to that one. There we go, and that's all set. We'll do a no shut. And this one doesn't look like it'll let us do it that way, so we'll just go ahead and we'll do write. And when we do write, it saves our configuration. And we're going to do the same thing for router 2. So I'm just going to pretend like we completely signed out of it. And, and now we have to log back in through our terminal. So if we had to do it that way, we'd type in en, conf t, and then ip route, the default route again. zeros cover every single address that can come through so everything gets sent through and then we're going to be sending it to this one right here so 10.0.6.1 and there we go and then I'll use the write command to save everything and that's all saved and then our next step is we're going to set up these switches because we want to have a VLAN 1 set up as an interface. So now we'll go ahead and set up the switch. And we'll get into the configuration here. Now if you wanted it to say something special there, you can just type in host name. And we'll just write in customer s one. See, as you see right here, say customer S1, so that way we can know which switch we're working on straight from the command prompt. And then we'll go ahead and set up our, our VLAN one. And basically, if you look right here, the VLAN one would be our connection right there, basically. So let's go ahead and set up the address on it. And we're just copying everything that's 
that's in there, so 255.255.252.0. And then just press enter. Then we'll do no shut. And then put end. And then we'll do copy run start. Press enter twice. So that saved everything on this configuration here. Now let's go ahead and go to our client switch. And then we'll do conf t to go into configuration mode. And we could do the same thing if you want. Host name, we'll just say client. So basically client s1. So there we go, so you can see client S1. So when we're working on it, we're like, okay, we're in the client one. And we'll configure VLAN one. And in here, because we're configuring this right here, we're basically going to be doing similar commands. We're just going to be basically doing IP address. And then it's going to be 10.0.4.2 with the subnet mask of 255.255.254.0. Press enter, then put no shut. Press enter twice. Do end to get to the main prompt here. Otherwise, you'd type in exit, exit. So basically, exit, enter, then exit, then enter. And then we'll do our copy, run, start. Press enter twice, and that's all saved. And now our configuration's all pretty much set up. Now, we basically have to create an ARP table, and it does it automatically. I mean, you can change the ARP table later with, with, the, with the ARP command, but basically, that's if something went wrong and something got configured with the, the wrong address. But first, let's go ahead and set up a, our computers here. So that's turned on. And we're going to do DHCP. And it should automatically fill in the values. And since we excluded the 10.0.4 from 4, 0 through 4, 255, see it says it right here? It went straight to 10.0.5.0. And that's why you see that. We're going to do the same thing here. And it's so much easier to config because now, see, look, as fast as somebody connects to the internet, they get their own address. And the DNS server, we already set that up earlier and see how that goes right there. We'll do the same thing right here. So the dynamic address will automatically be put in there. And then we'll do the same thing for these computers over here. See, as fast as we put it in there, it goes to the DNS server, and, and everything's set up just instantly. So it's a good resource to use. It just depends on how you're setting up your network. Sometimes it can make things more complicated, because not every computer has a specific IP address, which can make it easier sometimes for troubleshooting if you wanted to remote into that one PC. You can know their exact IP address instead of it changing all the time like this. So there we go, they're all set up. And now we'll go ahead and go to the next step. So I'm going to go into this computer here. And what I was going to do, you basically have to have the router automatically set up a table. So it's going to set up an art table. So we're going to try to go ahead and let's see what the, so this is 10.0.0.1 for this computer right here. So we're going to go ahead and just pick any random client here. So we're going to do this one to do ping 10.0.0.1. So there we go. And it ended up going all the way from here down over this way. 